Sheesh. The dog picked thorns out from his furry legs. The guards told him that the area was off limits, but that simply meant he had to go around and sneak past something he easily pulled off. Power plant or not, he'd been through the area so many times that he felt like the place was a second home for him. He scoffed. At this point, it's my only home. I have two parents who tell me what to do, I don't need some loser with a badge to do the same. He picked the last burr out from his shoe and continued forwards, pushing the branches out of his way with his arms and other times simply pushing them by trying to walk through them. Finally, he pushed his way through the last of the thick brush before the wood started to thin and he got back to the road that was blocked back the way he came. He shielded his eyes as he walked toward the sun, just above the horizon. Usually, he came at the same time every day. As much as he hated it, the giant wheel that was a part of the power plant usually blocked the sun. Whenever he got angry at his family which was often he'd come here and listen to the birds, the breeze, and the hum of the giant wheel spinning sometimes. That seemed to be the only part that varied about his trips, apart from the weather everything was typically peaceful, even when it started to storm. But whether or not the wheel's hum would be present to drown his thoughts seemed to be up in the air. Either way, he had earbuds in his pocket that would do the job if need be. He still held his hand up. Normally, the wheel would be blocking the sun by now. Did he forget how long he was walking? He did that frequently enough that it wasn't out of the question, but usually time feels like it's shorter, not longer. The sun was finally blocked, and he removed his hand to reveal the sun went behind the hill and not the power plant. The sight of the power plant also surprised him usually it seemed to be a bit run down, but otherwise in good condition. Now, the large wheel fell over on top of the rest of the buildings, which didn't seem to be able to offer any resistance against the undoubtedly massive weight. The walls that were still standing seemed to have large holes drilled into them, seemingly at random. The sight was so unusual, Samaga couldn't help but feel shocked. He hated the sight of it whenever he walked here, but seeing the plant in ruins almost made him feel bereaved not of a friend or loved one, but of a neighbor. He sighed. If nothing else, this would at least be interesting enough to distract him for a bit. When he got closer, he finally got to see firsthand the strange design of the wheel. The rim and conduit inside, which lying down, was about as tall as he was and the diameter of which was about 80 meters there were numerous supports which went across the wheel in several locations, like a bicycle wheel. All of which crushed the buildings it went through. He climbed over the top of the wheel and walked across one of the circular supports for a good 20 paces until he reached one of the buildings. The support beam he was on easily went through the concrete building, giving him an easy way in. After hopping down, he started felt a tingle in his skin all around. He picked a random hallway and started down it. Each of the random turns he took seemed to snake on forever, each with a different assortment of colors for navigation along the walls. Finally, the end of one path was marked by a boring metal door that had a burnt, shriveled up piece of notebook paper lying in front of it, which besides the rubble and pieces of rebar seemed to be the only piece of trash that was in the building. He placed his hand on the doorknob, before hesitating, the thoughts of how he technically wasn't allowed to be here to begin with. The feeling in his gut grew. Forget it. I've had enough of people telling me where I can and cannot go for a thousand lifetimes by now. His hand tightened, turned the doorknob, and threw the door open, the door made an unsatisfying thunk and scraped against pieces of rubble.